United Steel Workers, which is one of the more progressive unions, uh, has recently uh, made some tentative arrangements with Mondragon in uh, the Basque Country, this huge and worker-owned industrial banking, housing, school, educational cooperative. That could get somewhere. And uh, I mentioned uh, Garal Perovitz's work. He's uh, discussed very well the and uh, participates in the spread of uh, worker-owned enterprises in uh, mostly northern Ohio, the old Rust Belt. They have a kind of an interesting history, in, uh, which relates very much to this. Back in 1977, at the beginning of the concerted effort to destroy industrial production in the United States and uh, sort of beginning of the kind of neoliberal assault on the population we've been through in the past generation, uh, U.S. Steel decided to close its main steel plants in Youngstown, Ohio. It was a steel town like other working class towns like Detroit. It had actually been built by the working classes. It was their town. They didn't get the profit because they're tools, but uh, they built it. They wanted to keep it. Uh, U.S. Steel wanted to sell it to close it down, and the union offered to buy it. Uh, they had community support. They even had some uh, support of, I think it was a Republican governor, just buy, let the workers buy the plant and keep running it. Well, U.S. Steel didn't want that. In fact, this is con pretty consistent. I mentioned Dave Ellerman before. He's one who's written about it and worked on it. Very commonly around here too, Eastern Massachusetts, when workers decide to try to take over an enterprise, maybe an enterprise which may be perfectly profitable, but not profitable enough for the multinational who, you know, who runs it. Maybe they don't want to keep it in their books. When they try to buy it, which would be a good deal for the multinational, they refuse to sell it for class reasons. They have class interests. They do not want to see the spread of uh, popular democratic organizations for perfectly obvious reasons. This just happened in, uh, going back, I'll come back to Youngstown in a minute, but it just happened a couple of years ago right here in Taunton. There was a, a small but quite successful uh, manufacturing plant uh, it made specialized parts for aircraft, doing pretty well, but the multinational didn't want to bother with it, so they were going to close it down. Uh, the union, you know, uh, UE in this case, uh, tried to buy it. The multinationals usually refused to sell it, and there wasn't enough support, popular support, to push it through. If there had been an Occupy movement at that time, real, I think that's something they might have pushed through. Uh, Actually, uh, on a much larger scale, uh, a couple of years ago, uh, Obama virtually nationalized the auto industry. Uh, not entirely, but virtually. Uh, there were a couple of options. Uh, one option was to uh, restructure it, uh, use taxpayer funding, uh, hand it back to the original owners or other people just like them, maybe a different face, but you know, bankers, CEOs, and so on, and then have it continue to do what it had been doing before, building cars. That's what they chose. There was another option. I hand it over to the workforce, uh, have them uh, build what's needed in the country, which is not more cars for traffic jams, but high-speed mass transportation. The United States is very backward in the world in this respect. I mean, you can take a high-speed train from Beijing to Kazakhstan, but try to take a train from Boston to New York. It's about as slow as it was 60 years ago. Uh, this, you know, this is really backward. The country needs it. Uh, and the, the former auto industry could have been handed over to the workforce and uh, give, maybe given some support, uh, probably less than the auto industry got, to do this. But that wasn't an option. Suppose there had been a large-scale Occupy movement, you know, significant. It was significant, but broader, expanded. Well, I think that could have been pushed through. It takes popular consciousness. But going back to Youngstown, uh, the case went to court in 1977. Uh, the Union lost, workers lost, and it was the steel mills were destroyed. Uh, but they didn't give up. 
they didn't just say, okay, we'll starve to death or go somewhere else. Uh, they began to organize small worker-owned enterprises. And they've been spreading around uh, the Cleveland area, and good Youngstown, good bit of northern Ohio, into other areas. So it is taking place. But, you know, it's, it's happening elsewhere, too. In northern Mexico, there are quite successful worker-owned plants. Uh, it, it's not easy because, you know, the, 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 the banks don't like to give them capital, and the government doesn't like them and won't support them, again, for class reasons. But if there's sufficient popular support, these things can develop.